hello and welcome back to the uh, Dyson Sphere program. Now, uh, ever getting closer to that fully patched up Dyson Sphere, still uh, filling in the last couple of patches here and there. So this one's still to go, this one's still going. Um, this one is almost done and then this one's almost done as well. So in this case, to finish it off, it would have been better to break some of these, um, I guess, panes into a few more smaller bits so that we, um, more, like there's more of a rate of these solar sails arriving. Um, but again, I think this is like the last few pieces and they should be completed reasonably quickly. Okay, speaking of the Dyson Sphere, one of the key inputs for solar sails is actually, um, if we bring that up, yeah, it's the, um, it's the graphene. You need quite a lot of graphene to make this happen. You also need a lot of other materials here, so you need a lot of photon combiners too. Uh, but they're a little bit more straightforward because it's just, um, what do you call it? I think it's mostly uh, iron and um, uh, what do you call it? Copper and uh, stone. I think is what this what these are made up of. But the graphene is actually a little bit harder to come by. So it's one of the things that gets produced. If we bring it up, yeah, it's one of the things that you can produce using the crude um, oil path. But it's fairly late in that chain, right? So you need this graphene which is one of the things that's output when you um, when you combine that refined oil and uh, hydrogen or you can produce it from um, from coal which is actually the way to go um, I feel and then there's also this uh, sulfuric acid which is quite difficult to produce it requires a lot of uh, a lot of stone to produce uh, and water and, and oil so it's fairly labor intensive to actually put this together and a lot of the um, production actually it takes place in like the chemical side of things so either using these um, oil refineries or these chemical plants who are very very slow um, like this production uh, this is a bad example but let's look at the organic crystal for example over here um, you need a disproportionate number of these these machines that can be 10 per minute, which is very, very slow um, compared to the assembler and the um, smelters. They, they produce output a lot quicker. So one of the easy ways to collect, uh, or one of the sort of less specialist materials ways of collecting graphene is, yeah, through that oil production, line, which is probably the way that you're going to be forced to go uh, early on. But as soon as you can, I would recommend to start um, collecting the fire ice because that actually produces graphene quite nicely. Now it's also in a, um, what do you call it, in one of these here, in a chemical plant. And they, they don't go as quick as you'd like it to go. It's like two seconds or something like that. But um, I still needed like a huge um, number of them. Like it's going to take quite a while to find the end of this production line but at least it's only one like it's not multiple chemical facilities that are needed all the refineries and so on um, so where do you get the fire ice from well the best place to actually collect it from is if you can find um, a gas giant now I was kind of lucky and I had a gas giant with fire ice right here uh, I didn't actually end up collecting from it, although it would have been quite a nice thing to do it. Um, but yeah, using these uh, orbital collectors here, um, you can actually go and collect the fire eyes from there. Now I believe I have a couple of stations on there that I'll go and show you. That didn't come down. Okay, so it always gets in its in the way, but actually want to find the gas giant that can't find it. Um, okay, where is it? Ah, 
here we go. Okay, so the orbital collectors, um, you can only place them on the equator, so I'll try and hit the equator for this gas giant. You can tell by um, the winds on here usually go along the equator, and then you just go for where the winds are the biggest, and then uh, you find it. Now, let's see, where is where are the oh, ah here we go okay so you just need to follow it along so yeah the best way to collect the fire ice uh, because it's a permanent solution is to just collect it from um, one of these gas giants because it's going to produce it indefinitely and in in this case it's actually also producing hydrogen which is quite handy and it does that indefinitely as well um, so once we get to those orbital collectors i don't think i've been collecting from them very much okay they're just coming there. Uh, but the other way of collecting them, which I'll show you as well, is if you find it as a mineable, uh, like as an ore on a particular planet. But again, that's not that, but that's not a permanent solution. Oh, yeah, I've been actually collecting them from here as well, which is pretty cool. Um, Uh, but yeah, well, if you do it from a planet, it's going to run out eventually, and then you have to find another source for it, and it's just something that you have to keep thinking about and keep fixing, whereas this is a permanent solution. It's going to permanently produce um, fire ice for you, which is very, very handy. Um, so this is the recommended way, and you can produce quite a lot of, you can place down quite a lot of these um, orbital collectors around uh, gas giants. Like, I think you can place around 30 or maybe 35 um, depending on how big they are um, this is the minimum distance that you have between them and um, they power themselves which is really handy like they just use this hydrogen to power themselves and um, your ships will just come and collect it every now and then um, okay the other source of it so the other way that you can do it is um, by mining it which i'll show you as well so I have mining stations both on Tejat and Agena, and on Tejat I actually have, I found fire eyes. I've actually been there for a while and looked at the fire eyes situation. Okay, uh, now the hard part is actually finding the planetary system. My guess is that it's actually hidden behind the gas giant. Um, usually that's where it is. And doesn't show up on, um, on the screen. Like it doesn't show me where it is very easily. Okay. Ah, yeah. See, there you go. So we're sitting behind the gas giant. So let's go there. I think I'll take you along the warp drive ride, which is pretty fun. Okay. I still need to get out of the orbit of the gas giant, and then I can activate the drive. And, um, warp drive is pretty cool actually, I like it. It um, gets you between the various systems quite quickly. And it seems to speed up and slow down um, depending on how close you are from a star system as well. So right now it's going, the AUs they are going down quite rapidly, but as I get closer they're going to go down slow and you can see the sail speed in the bottom left is also slowing down a little bit. Okay, I think it's um, the third planet that I need to go to. The one that has silicon on it as well. Okay, so once the autosave goes away, then I will hopefully end up past it. Yeah. This one, you can already see that it's got some titanium, it's got some fire eyes, so it just appears as one of the um, ores that you can collect. Um, but again, this is not like the preferred solution. You can see that this is not actually being used that much because the local supply on the gas giant is actually pretty good. Um, but every now and then it does get collected um, and then a little bit more of it gets consumed. But I've had this here for a long, long time, and it's still going, so, uh, yeah, anyway, it's, so, this is one of the other ways that you can connect the fire eyes, which is not a, not a bad way to go, although it's 
um, it's probably going to produce a little bit more and it's not as material intensive to create the um, interstellar transportation compared to the orbital collectors but the orbital collectors are permanent solutions so i'd recommend that you go with the orbital collector so that's it thanks for watching and uh talk to you next time